The Saturn V wasn't just one machine. It was a symphony of brute force and delicate precision. At its base, five engines roared to life, each a fiery monster with the power of a nuclear reactor. And above them, six more engines burned with a quiet, icy rage. Five on the second stage, and the lone J-2 that had to reignite in space. The Saturn V's success hinged on a fundamental contradiction, the raw power of the F-1 engine and the cryogenic elegance of the J-2. This is the story of fire and ice, and how their unlikely partnership launched us to the moon. The F-1 engine was the largest, most powerful single-chamber liquid-fueled rocket engine ever built. It was a brute force solution to an impossible problem, producing a colossal 1.5 million pounds of thrust. The sound it produced at launch was so immense it could be felt for miles with acoustic shock waves powerful enough to shatter windows up to five miles away. NASA studies even reported the liftoff sound rivaling a nuclear blast. But that power came with a price. Engineers had to wrestle with something called combustion instability. The vibrations inside the combustion chamber were so intense and chaotic, they could tear the engine apart in milliseconds. To solve this, engineers had to get creative. They didn't just build a solution, they literally had to bomb the problem into submission. During testing, they would detonate small explosive charges inside the firing chamber. If the engine's new design, which included baffles on the injector faceplate, could self-heal and return to a stable burn, it was considered flight-worthy. This was a testament to the sheer will of the engineers who were determined to harness this beast. The F-1's fuel was also a marvel of engineering. It wasn't just a simple cooling system. They used the kerosene propellant itself to cool the engine as it flowed through a labyrinth of small tubes before being ignited. This regenerative cooling system featured over 178 miles of tubing and allowed the engine to burn hotter and longer than anyone thought possible. The turbo pump alone on a single F-1 produced 55,000 horsepower, the equivalent of a nuclear submarine's reactor. Each F-1 devoured nearly three tons of propellant every second, draining an Olympic-sized pool in under two minutes. But the F-1 was just the first act. The second and third stages of the Saturn V were powered by the J-2 engine. If the F-1 was fire, the J-2 was ice. It ran on liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen, a volatile and difficult to handle combination. The fuel had to be kept at incredibly low temperatures and the J-2 had to perform a seemingly impossible feat it had to restart in the vacuum of space. 
While the five J2 engines in the second stage only fired once, the single J2 on the third stage needed the ability to reignite. For the translunar injection burn, that one J2 had to fire up again after a three to four hour coast in the cold emptiness of space. This was a monumental challenge. If it failed, the Apollo crew would be forced to abort the lunar mission, but they would not be stranded. They'd re-enter on the same orbit. The J-2 engine's design was a marvel of lightweight construction and complex turbo machinery. It was an elegant machine, a testament to a different kind of engineering genius. It wasn't about overpowering a problem, it was about outsmarting it. The J-2 had to contend with the unique challenges of handling cryogenic fuel. Because liquid hydrogen is so light, the S-4B third stage's fuel tank was physically larger than the kerosene tank in the first stage, even though the rocket itself was much smaller. And to start the engine, a meticulous chill-down sequence was required. The J-2's fuel lines had to be flushed with hydrogen to supercool the metal. Otherwise, the liquid fuel would flash boil explosively on contact. Once in orbit, engineers faced another problem. In zero gravity, propellant sloshes around and the pumps would only ingest bubbles. The ingenious solution was to use Ulaj motors, small solid rockets, to settle the propellants at the bottom of the tanks before the J-2's restart. The Saturn V was a contradiction. The F-1 was all about brute force and raw power, the last word in a 1950s-era philosophy of bigger is better. It delivered raw pound force, lifting the rocket to about 40 miles high and roughly 6,000 miles per hour before handing off to the hydrogen-fueled stages. The J-2 was the future, lightweight, efficient, and capable of in-space operations. It produced just 230,000 pounds of thrust, about one-seventh that of the F-1, but it was about 40% more efficient, which gave the Saturn V its miles per gallon in space. The J-2s propelled the rocket to orbit and most of the way to the moon. The fire and the ice together formed a perfect synergy. Three different propellants, kerosene, liquid oxygen, and liquid hydrogen, and two fundamentally different engine designs were assembled for one rocket. The fire to lift us from the ground, and the ice to push us to the moon. 
The F-1 never flew again after the Apollo program, but the J-2's design matured and was even a planned part of future programs, a testament to its elegant engineering. The fire was never lit again, but the ice returned, 